Why on earth, in the roster of camera gear that I've had, have I had an A7S3, an FX6, and now an FX3? In that order. Especially since they all have the same specs. The FX6 for me was a dream. It was amazing, nothing wrong with it. The reason why I switched is important and it's something i want you to realize when it comes to choosing a camera for yourself when you pick a camera you need to pick the right one for your situation at the time i had the fx6 because i was doing more ad work and it was perfect for that now i'm creating these videos and it wasn't the thing about all three of these cameras is they share pretty much the same specs on the surface but underneath it all they couldn't be more different the a7s3 is a great camera and it is a baseline for this technology the fx6 replaced that as it was a cinema camera shout out to that beautiful nd filter the fx3 for me sorted the most important thing when it comes to a camera the chase but first the creator so an entire Hollywood blockbuster was shot on an FX3, a camera that you can buy for £3,949. Now, equivalent to a lot of other cinema cameras, you're looking to spend in excess of £60,000. What was so special about this camera? There's your dream, the goal. Something that you want. You chase it and you work out a shortcut. Nothing wrong with that, you take it. What ends up being perhaps the decision that's right ends up being a mistake. Equally, you take the long way. You buy something cheap and it just doesn't work for what you need it to. You fall out of love with what you're doing. There's a path in front of you which would have been the optimal way to go. And you should have done that in the first place. need to reach certain conditions budget use size and spec budget as in is this affordable for me right now use for how much am i actually going to be using this product has this camera got the right specs for what i need it to do is the camera the right size for what i'm using it for 80 million usd was the budget for the creator okay bear with me on this one it will make sense how much of that 80 million do you really think they spent on the camera they got paid for actors support gear lighting everything you need to actually make a full-blown movie so by all means you can spend a lot of money on a camera but when you're not really using it and it becomes effectively a paperweight do you need to justify having that around when you can create productions of better with a smaller, sleeker camera. The point here is sometimes the biggest and best gear is not always the correct choice. You need to think carefully. Taking a shortcut is not gonna help you pick the right camera for you. For me, I had a very simple layout of what I needed in a camera. I needed a cinema camera or something capable of cinema quality work. I needed the ability to use XLR inputs, which if you want to get clean, clean, clean audio, then it's, it can do that. It can do it nicely. It can do it well. And it's great for podcasts. I wanted to make sure I still had the S&Q functionality because it's something that I use pretty much all the time. I wanted it in a smaller form factor. So if I wanted to rig it out into a big cinema camera, I can. If I wanted to keep it nice, small, lightweight and compact, can do that as well. Here we have the FX3 inside of the Felcam cage. And what we like about it is that it's extremely modable. So like when I'm shooting these videos, it's nice to actually have something that works with me, not against me. So as you can see, simple clip system. So I can actually have this down to a vlogging setup pretty much instantly. And it saves time on shoot, which I think is one of the most important things. The other side is I know a lot of people like EVFs. I never use them. This camera is awesome. And it's the one that I should have picked originally. It has all the specs I need. It fits within my budget. I know that I'm going to have my use out of it. I'm going to be using it pretty much constantly. And it's also the perfect size as well. Coming back to the creator, when they were originally putting together the initial short film to pitch the movie, 
They took a Nikon out to Thailand and filmed in and about the area to do some location scouting and to build out the visual storytelling of the actual film itself. Now, it didn't have a storyline, but what they did like is the size. And they enjoyed shooting with a much smaller camera with a lollipop gimbal, which is a really cool way to actually call a handheld gimbal lollipop. Great, right? So they went through a whole heap of cameras, the sharpness, the colors, and the quality out of the footage that they needed to for theatrical release. And they came to settle on the FX3. It's a powerful little camera. Now, my final decision on this was not based on the creator. When you're looking for a camera, it needs to fit the needs that you have for what you're doing. And this one does it for me. Another may do it for you. This can be applied to photographers and videographers alike. And I hope I've explained this well. Make sure you step back. Have a look at what's there. Make sure that you're picking the right camera. And at Camera Centre UK, I believe our staff are very capable of helping you with that and making sure that you pick the best camera for yourself. And don't take a shortcut. At the end of the day, when you are creative, you can be creative in any situation with any camera. When you're looking at a camera, make sure you're picking the right one for you and make sure it can do the things that ultimately you need it to do. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure you like, follow and subscribe if you want to see more. Have a good day.